Hello folks, if you're like me, you might agree that some things in life are just a bit better with the top down. And that can apply to cars. Now, let's check these out. This video is just a bit of fun really, but I'm really looking at bargain cars under three grand. You could maybe own for the summer and then jog on, maybe tidy them up a bit, maybe do a little bit of work and even get a, a little bit of a profit. Uh, but just good fun little summer cars. There are a couple with some performance and some with not very much performance But they're all convertibles. They're all under three grand Some are Ulez compliant some aren't and they're all advertised as having less than 80,000 miles Just remember if you are serious about any of these cars do a proper background check My link to vcheck is in the video description because as we know we can't rely 100% on just an HPI check So we need to do a little bit more so that link to vcheck's there if you use that link, it helps support the channel. Thanks. Let's crack on. We're starting off with this one. It's the MGTF. Do you remember these? So these are quite cool looking little things. This is one of the worst pictures I've ever seen in a used car listing. Either that or those teenage years have caught up with me. But that's a little bit blurry, I would say, and possibly not framed particularly well interior looks nice looks fairly original it's got a replacement head unit but that's probably a good thing but it looks fairly original in there so it's got a year's mot on it gray five plus owners no other information i'm going to assume there's no service history with it as it's not mentioned Seventy-two thousand miles 1.8 petrol manual uh, 0 to 60 in 8.2 seconds and running cost 330 quid a year tax 35.6 mpg is claimed 1345 quid that's quite a good price for that car it looks like the wheels have been done potentially they probably didn't come with wheels that color and they really suit it if that did have a bit of history i think that's one you could possibly make a few quid on uh, providing that it's all in good order Right, check this one out. The 2005 Ragtop Beetle. I think these might become quite collectible because you don't see a lot of them. They're an oddball sort of car and they're sometimes the things that become worth a few quid in time. You would have to do a bit of work on this. Those wheels look like someone's gone at them with an angle grinder. There are definitely a few scuffs and scratches on the paintwork that would need to be addressed. It's a good mileage, 77,000 manual petrol. Uh, a lot would depend on service history. You could get that one up to tip top condition over the summer and maybe sell that on for a few quid or hold on to it as a bit of fun. You never know, it might just sit in your garage and gain value. It says it's got service history with invoices, last service 74,000, new brake pads, new alternator, two remote keys. Facelift model, electric roof, grey, drives fantastic. Some age related marks, light scratches and chips, otherwise a clean example. An interesting one, what is it like on running costs? 290 quid a year tax, 36 mpg and performance 12.3 seconds. That's definitely not a performance car by any means, is it? But like I say, it's quirky, it's a bit different, they could go up in value. You can see in this picture here as well that the owner's done a nice little self-portrait there of what can only be described as a manly physique. 2006 Mazda MX-5, this one, 1.8 two-door, fairly sort of bog-standard MX-5. It's definitely had a bit of paint because, as you can see there, that door appears to be a different shade to this body. So it's had a bit of paint. It might not have been done the best. It certainly hasn't matched that well, but sometimes you can sort of deal with that with a bit of a mop and polish. You can see a little bit of damage on that front bumper here, and again, that seems to be a slightly different colour and the number plate's in an odd position. So it does feel like it might have had a bit of a knock, this one. There are loads of these around. There's almost one for any budget, an MX-5. Probably three grand will get you a half decent one. Uh, this one's got full service history and full MOT. Looks and drives amazing. I would say it doesn't look amazing, but if it's got full service history, it drives well, everything else checks out, then you could possibly deal with a few of these things or just not bother, have a bit of fun with it and sell it on cheap when you're finished. Running costs 265 quid a year tax, 38.7 MPG and 9.4 seconds to 60. Uh, MX-5s are a modder's dream by the way, there's just about everything you could imagine available on the aftermarket and loads of people use them for track cars and all sorts. They are good fun and good value and as I said you can do more or less what you want with it. Now 2005 Chrysler Crossfire here is not on the radar of many people but this is one that could become an appreciated classic in my personal opinion and it's ULES compliant. 
a 3.2 litre Mercedes engine in this, 2,495 quid. This one's got 77,000 miles on it, 12 months MOT and a full service history, which I would want to check out thoroughly. 360 quid a year road tax, 27.2 MPG, and you're getting 6.5 seconds to 60, so it is genuinely a performance car. And I still think they look cool. They have genuinely got their own style. I think these are rare enough and individual enough to become classic cars of the future. This one looks to be in very, very good condition and looks nice and original. Certainly from these photos, obviously I haven't inspected the car or anything, but the condition does really look good. It's nicely fitted out. It's all original, even that stereo is original. And that could be a lot of fun for someone. Two and a half grand for that. It's bonkers, isn't it? Absolutely bonkers. Right, next we've got the Toyota MR2 1.8 Roadster. Not a million miles away from the MX-5, really, is it? Uh, certainly, you know, that's probably its biggest rival. I personally like the old MR2s with the flip-up headlights, the ones from sort of the early 90s. But they're going for silly money nowadays for anything like a reasonable example. 290 quid a year on road tax. There's no there's no other running costs available on this. Nor is there a 0 to 60 time, but it's not gonna be a lightning quick car, but it's gonna be lots of fun. Now this one's had a double din stereo wedged in, but they haven't bought the trim panel, so it looks a bit rubbish. So you probably want to do that, otherwise you're making it a bit easy for someone to steal. Um, otherwise, looks to be in fairly good nick. All those bits look nice and original, which is important on a car like this. You don't want one of these and you pick up the engine bay and it looks like they've ram raided Halfords or something. You want nice original cars. They're the things that hold their money well. So two and a half grand they want for this, 53,000 miles. It's not a bad shout. I can't see that you're going to have trouble selling that car on again for less than, say, two grand. And it does appear to be quite a nice example. Next, the mini convertible. This one's a Cooper S convertible. Big thing with minis, uh, if anything goes wrong, it can cost a lot of money. Things like a clutch can be extremely expensive. So you want to really, really check the mechanicals over on a mini before you part with your cash. Although this generally looks like quite a nice example, it has got a little bit of damage here, as we can see. Uh, but it's not the end of the world. It's going to probably cost you 200 quid to get that sorted. Leather interior. Alloys do need a refurb on this one. It's got the cover for the roof, which is good on a convertible, especially a car like this that might be a bit of an occasional car for you. The fact they've bought that cover suggests that it may have had leaks in the past or indeed currently leaks. So check that out. Stick a hose over it while you're there or something. Nice car. Bit of fun. Great for nipping around in the summer, isn't it? 330 quid on the road tax, 34 MPG, 0 to 60, 7.4 seconds, 2,750 quid. Can't be bad. Audi TT. So this is a Mark 1 Roadster. Now with Audi TTs, the Mark 1 is sort of the purists love the Mark 1. I personally prefer the Mark 2, which came in, I don't know, 2006, 2007, because I think it looks a little less dated. But if you're after sort of the classic car look, brilliant, get one of these. Three grand. The other thing with the TT is I way prefer the coupe than the Roadster. But as we're looking at soft tops here, we are looking at the Roadster. TT is a brilliant, brilliant driver's car. I know they've got a reputation for being a hairdresser's car. They are brilliant driver's car. I would love to get one at some point for the channel. If at any point, you know, I'm actually successful at this and making anything like a living. I'd like, love to get a really nice original Mark II and maybe do like a road trip in it and make a few videos with it. But pipe dreams, folks, pipe dreams. Um, right, here we go. This one looks quite nice. No glaringly obvious issues with it. Uh, nice and original inside. Can't see under the bonnet in any of these pictures, but there's no mention of it being modded. That's one problem with TTs is there is a bit of a modding scene for them and a lot of them have been sort of heavily got at. That certainly doesn't help the resale values. But folks, there's nothing wrong with modding cars at all. But if a car has been modded, I would suggest that you look for receipts and invoices for that work to see that it's been done by a professional. And there are places, I mean, locally to me, some places where they specialise in modding cars and they're brilliant at what they do and they're highly skilled at it. But... You can also obviously buy the bits off eBay and have a go yourself. 
and that's where sometimes people come a little bit unstuck with buying modded vehicles so always nice to see a nice original example so full service history on this one manual petrol 1.8 roadster under three grand 330 quid tax 34 mpg and 0 to 60 in 8.9 seconds next we've got the mercedes slk i can remember these coming out and everyone sort of gawping at them a bit and uh, I still think that's a really good looking car. I don't think they've aged too badly at all. Again, they've got a reputation as a hairdresser's car, but they drive very, very well. This is the 1.8 litre. Obviously, there are higher performance versions. 7.9 seconds to 60 in this one. 360 quid tax, 32.5 MPG, and it's ULES compliant. 12 months MOT. It says service history, but not full service history. So you have to really check that out because that is quite a low mileage for the age. Then we've got the BMW Z3. So 1998, three grand, 1.9 litre convertible manual petrol, running cost 330 quid on tax, 36.2 MPG, and then 9.5 seconds to 60, which is not great in a Z3. Very low mileage, reliable M44 engine, we'll have a year's MOT. Prior to COVID, it had done roughly 500 miles a year. As for the past nine years, it's always been kept undercover, as did the previous owner. Service book stamped up to 33,000, receipt for service done at 50, major service at 55, lady owner. Runs and drives perfect. So that could all be true, or it could be they did 500 miles every year and adjusted the mileage shall we say so always inspect don't expect as they say check these things out don't take someone's word for it really have a look you know does the interior of the car match a car that's done fifty-seven thousand? does the driver's seat for example look more tired than the parents of a three-month-old baby if so it's probably done more than the advertised mileage as it goes, this one looks in pretty good nick. Obviously, you can replace interior trim and you can replace seats and all that kind of stuff to try and hide these things. On a three grand car, if it looks like it's in fairly good nick, maybe just take their word for it. I think the thing is, with all these cars, as long as you buy well and you give the thing a really, really good test drive and you do check out the past a little bit with it, if you've only got three grand in it, two and a half grand, whatever it is, that should put you in a really good position where that car's going to cost you very little to own. And if you buy really well, you might even be able to own it for a little while, have your fun with it and sell it for a profit. Finally, folks, got to leave you with this one. It was the Triumph TR7. These things were absolute mustard when I was a lad. Everyone wanted a TR7. They could have a few problems with rust. And uh, as you can see, this one probably would benefit from a bit of a wash and a teacup, maybe. Obviously, no issues with the roof there whatsoever. That appears to be in really good condition. And the interior is very, very original, as you can see. But what do we know about this one? 35,000 miles. Needs full restoration top to bottom. Really? I wouldn't have guessed that from the pictures. Car will need towing as won't start, obviously. Uh, has complete engine, no mileage record with DVLA. Contact me for more images. Uh, seriously, that's obviously a massive, massive project for someone. But I just love seeing a TR7 on here while I was doing my searches because it just took me back to my childhood. One of those cars that I loved as a kid and I've completely forgotten about. Probably would never own one, unfortunately. 900 quid for that one, folks. Thanks ever so much for watching. Please go and follow me on the social medias. And if you are going to buy a used car, please use my link for VCheck. It does support the channel, but I genuinely use VCheck for my own vehicles. It's a brilliant service and it's far, far more reliable than an HPI check or the checks you see on things like Auto Trader and eBay. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and give this video a thumbs up. It's massively important and I really appreciate every one of you that does it. And thanks to all the people that bought me a coffee. See you next time.